Hello and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Frederik Steinmetz and today I'd like to take the trefoil knot that we created in the last tutorial to the next level. Unfortunately we're going back into 2D space for the moment but in the next part we're going to have a look at how to take this back into 3D space. So this is what's called an epitrochoid. I guess I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's kind of hard for me to guess. So the epitrochoid is created by a small circle rolling along a blue circle and it has a dot somewhere in here that makes it, that draws a line. Here's the animation to that. This is of course from Wikipedia and you can see how the path of the epitrochoid is created. And the reason why I took the still image first was because this was kind of distracting me while I was talking. So I guess by now we get the picture. And let's have a look at the formula. Okay, formula is just a little more complicated than the trefoil knot. It has a few more brackets and let's have a look at what those letters stand for. We have the large R, the capital R, and we can see right here what it does. It's in this example, it's three, and it's the radius of the blue circle, which the small circle rolls along. We have the small r, which is the radius of the smaller circle, the black one. We have theta. Theta is the angle at which the circle is at the moment. So uh, if it was right here, our theta would be exactly this. And d is the distance between the center point of the black circle and D is this, the distance between the center point of the black circle and the little red dot that draws the line. And that's about it. There we go. Oh, the only variables left are the ones we have already discussed. So let's see how we can get this math into Blender. First, let's start off by creating the animation nodes screen. For that, I'm just going to choose animation nodes down here. I'm sorry, still new to Blender 2.8 actually. The headers are now on the top and the animation nodes windows gets created here. Okay, if you remember from last time, the fairly simple formula of the trefoil knot actually took quite a few nodes. And if you compare that to this formula, this might actually take quite a few more nodes because we need an add node, multiplied, cos, minus, multiplied, cos, and so on. Well, you get the picture. It's about 10 nodes. So I'd like to, I'd actually like to take this one step further. We're going to use an expression for that because then we can exchange about 10 nodes with a single line of code. So let's, let's just go ahead and uh, open a text editor. and create a new text so we can type something and let's just copy what's over there. Okay, we have x equals parentheses r plus small r close parentheses multiplied by cosine of theta. Now let's just call it t and we subtract d times cosine of and we don't have fractions so we need another parenthesis which would be like this r plus small r divided small r and that multiplied by theta and close parentheses okay what i like to do in uh, text editor is use this because now you can see, we can check which parentheses got open and closed. So we can see that there is no problem there. Okay. And for the Y, I'd like to just copy this line and paste it. And we exchange the X by Y. R plus R stays the same. Cos gets sine. That's about it. Okay. So you can see one line of code, which isn't too bad, I guess. And we can start constructing our loop. 
Okay, so I'm not going to delete the default cube because I think it gets deleted way too often. I'm just going to shrink it down. Okay, let's get started with the animation nodes. Create a new node tree. And as you probably know by now, I like to disable the always and only auto execute the node tree when it's actually changing. Okay. So let's start by using a number float. And this is our theta. So let's just label it exactly that. And now I'm going to use an expression, which is under subprograms, and I'm going to use an expression. And I'm just going to go into here and highlight the entire line, press Control C hover with the mouse over this and press Control V. And we get an error. And that is capital R is not defined. And of course, as soon as we define capital R, it'll say a small r and t and so on are not defined. So we're going to have to create the inputs. We need one for cap, one for capital R. And of course, that's a float. Another for small r, again, float. One for the distance d, which also is a float, and the last one would be r theta. And again, I keep doing this all the time. Okay, so this needs to be capital R, this needs to be small r, small d, and small t. Now we have a division by zero, that's because small r is not supposed to be zero. So we're going to plug in the theta here. And I think at this point, we already know enough about loops that we don't need to uh, pretest this with a single value. So let's just dive right into the loop, uh, get a subprogram, a single loop. And of course, we need all these variables except for theta, because theta is going to be our index. Okay, new parameter again, float. And the float is going to be capital R. We might name this uh, large radius and a new float I'm going to call this small radius and by the way we cannot use any spaces in the expression of the variable of course because if you if you want to divide a name into two parts like small radius large radius we would get an error because a python interpreter would could treat it as two variables and if there's two variables right next to each other without any operators in between them, it doesn't really make any sense to the computer. Okay, then we need float. And this is, I think the D is for distance. I'm not sure, I'm just gonna call it distance. And last one would be our step size. Step size is the distance between two calculations. And I just remembered, we're going to have to divide the index by the step size. And right now that would create a kind of a fork that crosses all the other lines. That's a little unfortunate, if you ask me. Let's just create the math node that you, so you can see easily what I'm talking about. Math, we need to divide and divide the index by the step size. And uh, now you can see if I drag these out, then they would all cross this. So what I want to do is go into the node settings and then just click on the step size, move it all the way up. And now you can see it's not intersecting. Okay, time to take this expression into our loop. And we're going to connect. Uh, this is going to be our theta. And this is going to be our large radius, small radius, and the D still intersecting. So while we're at it, just move this up as well. So there we go. Now the expression doesn't show any errors anymore. We're not dividing by zero anymore. And we have declared all the variables. So I'm going to press Control Shift D, which unfortunately my screen capture software does not allow. So at home, please press Control Shift and D so the connections stay the same because they are exactly the same. 
and I have to redo this right here. Okay. What we have now is our expression that outputs our x and the expression that outputs our y. Okay, next thing we want to do is make something with this. Right now we're we're creating a few numbers and we put them into space and that of course doesn't change our scene. We're just doing some calculation. So I'm going to use an object transforms output and also we need to divide uh, also we need to combine our numbers to a vector so a vector combine node will help us to do that we connect the x to the x and the y to the y no surprise there and with this eyedropper i can select the active object which at this point is our default cube that is not default anymore because i shrunk it okay now I want to alter the position of the cube and I put the vector in here. Nothing happens. And that is because the loop does not get executed. This is just the recipe for the loop. This is what it does once it gets executed. But right now it doesn't. Let's move this out of the way and invoke the loop. So subprogram, what happened here? Subprograms, invoke subprogram and I'll just use my use my loop okay right now the small radius would be zero again so again we would be dividing by zero what I'm going to do is I'm just taking the step size that Wikipedia uses as well so the large radius was three the small radius was one and the distance was 0 0.5 and I'm going to also increase the step size because we're also using a divide node and we don't want to divide by zero again. Okay. So right now, since we're invoking this loop, if I turn up the iterations, you can see the cube is actually moving, which is nice. But same as last time, we don't want a cube moving along that path, even though that might look interesting. It'll only show after I don't know how many frames of an animation. We want to show how fun this is in every frame. So again, like in the last time, we create a new generator output and we'll choose vector list. Okay, and as soon as we do that, you can see the vector list gets created right at the output of our loop. But right now it's outputting nothing because it's not connected. So I'm going to plug this into the vector list. And now each time the loop gets executed, it'll calculate a vector and it will store that vector in this list. So as often as we execute the loop, that is how long the vector list gets. And again, same as last time, we need to do something with the vectors we created. Shift A, spline from points, and create, do this. Then we need a spline object output and also we need to create a spline. I'm going to put the spline right in the center of the scene, otherwise it gets a bit offset unless you use word space, and I would not recommend using word space. Okay, so spline, again, we need to do this, select the spline, and there we go, beautiful. One line. The reason is, of course, we're having the same value for the x as we do for the y, so it, of course, creates a single line with an incline of 45 degrees or exactly one so let's exchange that we already wrote down the formula for the y and paste it in here and there we go much better so for now let's leave the step size at zero which does not work so leave it at one of course zero doesn't work because we're dividing by it and we'll change the iteration to zero and have a look at what happens if we make this thing grow. Okay, this is pretty boring. So same as last time, let's increase the step size to 10. And if I do this, we can watch our figure starting to grow. And since I'm impatient, I'll just drag this. Okay, now this looks exactly like it does on the Wikipedia page. And that is, well, pretty logical because math is math and we use the same values. However, I find this a little boring. 
the reason why this is just one line, and if I keep increasing that, we're just going round and round, and the, the line does the same thing every time. The reason is, these are divisible by each other. So if you can divide the large radius by the small radius and get a whole number, not a decimal, then we go around and round. If I change this slightly, you can see we're starting to get a figure. And I'm going to increase this to 800, make it more interesting. And you can see this is like a woven basket, I guess. And you can easily toy around with this and wait till you get an interesting structure. There we go. That one I kind of like, so I make it a little larger and it does this. And you can see right now, 1.2 divided by 0 0.4. Let's multiply that. 12 divided by 4 would be 3. So we get a structure with three knots. And we can do the same thing if we add 0.4 here. We get this, and every time we add 0.4, we get one more loop. Okay, so again, if I decrease this, we get kind of this stuff. Okay, so if you end up with this jagged structure, feel free to increase the iterations. That actually, Blender can handle this. And as same as last time, this looks a little jagged, so I'm going to use a spline smooth busy. There we go. That looks really nice. Okay, the large radius of course increases the increases the structure of the small radius. You can also go crazy and make the small radius larger than the large radius. And you can see every time you hit some point where this is just following uh, the same path and starting over and over which makes it kind of fun if you animate it. Because if you have a very complex structure and all of a sudden it looks like this, it's kind of surprising, at least to me. That's what happens if you play with the distance. And at this point, I'd just like to leave you alone to play with your newly formed mathematical construct Thank you for tuning in and as always, please do try this at home.